dear participants and students uh, in this lecture we'll discuss about the bioprinting of kidney so as i've discussed in the in case of bioprinting of heart in the earlier lecture so we start with the motivation for doing a bioprinting of kidney structure uh, and also then we'll discuss some examples of 3d printing of different kidney tissue structures like uh, the <clears throat> till now the printing of whole kidney whole functional kidney is not yet achieved because there are various technological challenges in that so we'll discuss some of this thing in this particular lecture let us start with the motivation why kidney bioprinting can be a major breakthrough like kidney failure is a global challenge if you see there are many patients who are who are uh, who has this end stage kidney failure where the kidney has to be trans uh, in, transplanted and there are actually many patients they are waiting for say the kidney transplants because if you see the number of supply is much lesser than the demand so there are many patients who are awaiting for kidney transplants kidney transplantation and and for this kind of kidney failure patients only therapeutic option is the dialysis and renal transplantation so many people they undergo dialysis when they are at the early stage when by dialysis by removing the the secretory material or the the toxins and other materials that the kidney generally that filters out that the dialysis is a method by which the, that can be done using using dialytic apparatus but and but in certain cases when they further advance to the end stage their renal transplantation is the only option and there are limited organ donors and also certain cases risk of tissue rejection cost and other complications those remain as major challenges for renal transplantation also because there are very much very less donors available and also not we need to see the matching of this tissue histocompatibility factor is required like where the tissue set matching is required for transplantation and also the, this procedure and the thing is very expensive and there are there many other complications associated with this uh, renal transplantation so renal transplantation is not uh, very affordable and also not there are there are not many transplants available also there so many patients are available because they they uh, sometimes they die because of the because of waiting for a transplant kidney so so there are these are challenges and due to this artificial kidney could be a promising solution for this kind of end stage kidney renal failure patients but if we try to bioprint a kidney we need to understand the structural and functional requirement to do that actually if you see kidney is one of the most complex organs in our body it has different types of structures like starting from nano to macro at different level the structures are present at different levels and uh, the function of the kidney depends on the, all these different structures and their development they have also unique developmental cues and then microscopic special resolution another important thing to consider here is the kidney it contains more than 30 different cell types and their functions are very very different so so creating the a structure with this many number these many types of cells is is a, is a humongous challenge and also the, the kidney is intricately patterned the epithelial tubes named as nephrons kidney has this intricately intricately patterned epithelial tubes that name nephrons that carries the the filtered thing to to the to the to the to um, the uh, what is called dialysis to the bladder to the kidney bladder to the bladder so this tubes this nephron has different functions it also helps in first thing the, the first part of the, the kidney is the, the, the 
that is present that, that's a main part where the filtration unit that is called Bowman's capsule it is that surrounds the glomerulus where actually the filtration of the blood happens and then from there it the blood carries to the um, renal tubule the blood blood sorry the filter salts that carries to that uh, the, the urine part that uh, go to go to the goes to the renal tubule from the renal uh, in the renal tubule that has different types of tissue where reabsorption again secretion all these things happens and finally it goes to the collecting tubule from there it goes to the bladder urinary bladder so this so this the different structures are of different different scale they are present in different scales okay so nephron is the functional unit of kidney where there are several there are billions of of nephrons present in a kidney and then they they do this well, they do this uh, filtration and finally collecting the urine and when we sending the urine to the urinary bladder for further release. So this the kidney so nephron is so uh, recreating the nephron structure is very very important for to do this job and as I mentioned the first structure present in the nephron is the glomerulus then there are ascending globe descending globe Henley's and all these things are on these structures are present finally the collecting tubule and other structures present so each segment of this kidney is responsible for its own physiological roles and then thus a different microanatomical features present in that one structure you see in the kidney different structure has their own anatomical representation they present at different scales and their physiology is very different so that is that we have to reproduce the, those structures for bioprinting of kidney without that that uh, the kidney will function will not be achieved but complexity of this kidney is the kidney as, as I mentioned the kidney structure is so complex and it has so many different types of structures so this this kind of complexity cannot be reproduced by any tissue engineering study methodologies any traditional sorry any traditional tissue engineering methodology like what we other do by casting by this thing it cannot be achieved and because the each element has to be engineered separately based upon the structure based upon their structure the microstructure present there based upon their the particular the particular the, what are the cell types present there the particular uh, depending on the different uh, typical cell types present in that or in that element those things we have to consider while going for Biofabric while going for bioprinting. So bioprinting is a suggested technique by which it has shown some possibility of replicating a few of the renal structures like a, some nephron structures like a part of the renal tubule, a proximal tubule, all these things are printed and all these things are demonstrated and, and the physiological functions and have again been have, has been seen in that in that kind of tissue structures so bioprinting has got huge prospect to generate bioprinting of full kidney but still we have not reached that stage so in this lecture i will discuss few of the 3d models 3d uh, bioprinted models that uh, that researchers have developed over time uh, and these are very important breakthroughs where uh, people where researchers have shown some uh, a few parts of this particular organs like this first uh, in this first research paper uh, published by Lee et al in PNS when they have actually print used 3d printing technique for development of complex 3d models of kidney tissue where actually they have printed a human renal proximal tubule a PT proxim proximal tubule renal proximal tubule with convoluted tubular architecture and open lumen structure was printed with extrasolar matrix and, and and then they have formed into a in the microprotic chip so they are they have printed this proximal tubule. this is a part of the nephron pt and it it does several other functions so they here they are their interest is to print reproduce that that structure proximal tubular structure and please understand this this is a convoluted tubular architecture it has a particular architecture and also i'll show some of the images from this particular study in the next in the next slide where you okay, can so and then then the lumen is also open in that bioprint structure so that is very important so because 
if the structure is not lumen then open lumen is open then the, it can serve the function of this transport now this this tube after they printed this this tube was actively perfused with proximal tubule epithelial cells because epithelial cells they are the they create the lining of this of this proximal tubule where the epithelial cells they are there it carries the it carries the, the filtered so filtered thing and then when it is goes through this so the, that part that luminous structure where epithelial cells are present result is that and when they actually perfuse the epithelial cells in through that proximal tubule in the from the luminous site it got attached to that uh, luminous site but it enhances the epithelial morphology and function properties so that if we don't have a epithelial lining in the proximal tubule then it cannot function rather it cannot recreate the function that is that is done by the proximal tubule in native tissue so that's why the epithelial cake a complete epithelial morphology is very much important to generate and that they have achieved then also they have seen whether this uh, kind of proximal 3d binder tissue proximal tubule whether it can uh, do physiological function like one such thing is suppose if we inject some nephrotoxin drug like cyclosporin a if it is injected to the body and if it goes to the kidney it is a highly nephrotoxic drug so it will it will destroy the nephron structures this thing so epithelial but so that is like so to mimic that kind of physiological response when they injected this uh, cyclosporin a within the system what they found that epithelial barrier as i mentioned the epithelial cells when a when they are injected in the proximal tubule they create a epithelial lining so this epithelial cell to cell connection is very important they create some tight junctions because of that they maintain a barrier so that the whatever the filtered tubule that is coming through the passing through the tubule that should not get again uh, the whole thing should not get absorbed there should be a selective absorption and selective again selective secretion so that can that kind of thing should go on in within the proximal tubule so the nephrotoxic that 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 what is the what it does when it is uh, injected into their the printed tubule that structure if the epithelial barrier is disrupted and that is also a dose in a dose dependent manner so that means uh, at very low dose that probably that epithelial barrier is not disrupted completely but when the dose was increased that epithelial was slowly the epithelial barrier was disrupted and that kind of disrupted epithelial barrier is is cannot do the physiological function so this is actually a physiological response can be was seen in a 3d printed model so that's a very important outcome for from the study the other thing they have also done but they have also printed another tube tubule structure where endothelium cells are present so basically basically they want to create that tubular vascular structure that is present in case of in the renal in, in this proximal tubule structure where a in a tube two adjacent tubes are printed in one tube epithelium cells are perfused and another other one endothelium cells were perfused but these two tubes were present adjacently with a closed loop perfusion so that the things from one tip to another tip can 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 be diffused by this thing because they want to try create this kind of that active reabsorption by other tubular vascular exchange of solutes right because what happened after filtration through the after filtration from the glomerular whatever the rest salts and solutes present in the filtered solution that will again reabsorb in in case of pro, in pre proximal tubule so and also glucose is glucose also getting reabsorbed in from the proximal tubule so they want to understand whether this kind of physiological functions can happen in a 3d printed models or not so that's why they have created this this a tubular vascular model where and then they were saying whether this albumin uptake or glucose reabsorption can happen or not so that that found they have found that this model the 3d printed model actually can perform this kind of can actually for uh, yeah this this kind of physiological function can actually happen in a 3d printed model so that is very important outcome from this study 
another thing also they have seen suppose in case of you know native tissue if some people are uh, when the people generally when the glucose level level is high in their body that, that means so in case of hyperglycemia the kidney functions can be highly disrupted that means so there what they found in case of also hyperglycemia a human like disease state is formed which can be reduced by administer glucose transport inhibitor but 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 again suppose in case of hyperglycemia a human disease like kidney in case of kidney also that is in case of diabetic kidney so where if the suppose people have people, people have this diabetes where the sugar level is high in their body that cause to cause a disease to the kidney so that kind of similar disease can be developed by inducing that 3d printed proximal tubule with hyperglycemia with high level high amount of glucose but in this case again this can be reversed by administering glucose transport inhibitor so that is because we typically for this kind of condition glucose transport inhibitors are generally prescribed and then they have found also the similar response can be seen by using a glucose transport inhibitor in a 3d printed model so this here so this importance of this study is the here they have shown with 3d bioprinting we can actually develop a tubular convoluted tubular architecture that that is for the to develop a renal proximal tubule and then then when a physio physiological responses can be a physiological functions can be re-established within this 3d printed model this thing so this is an important study here the for the images from this study where you see this is their concept where they have actually used a uh, this kind of concept where they printed a a tubule like convoluted tubule like structures with the help of with this thing with the pretty print here and then they printed this then they what they have done they recreated this kind of morphology a tubule like morphology where two two tubes were printed first with the sacrificial chloronic inks chloronic ink was used to create this kind of this sacrificial template tubule like template and also this uh, the ecm material material was used to print the structure right so then when this structure is printed then they, this this ecm was again put on top of this and that was casted cast and then they chloronic is actually the advantage is we could reduce the temperature the chloronic is, is can be easily can be chlorine can be easily taken out so then it leaves a then it the uh, a lumen like structures a channel like structures within this thing and there then in one channel they have perfused epithelial cells and on the other channel they have perfused this endothelial cells then they create these two other things so here if you can clear see approximately vasculature a simple structure and a convoluted structures can also can also be printed with this thing and then these two channel these two channels are connected to they are very connected to can they are can very much connected and you can please see the PT proximal tubule and vasculature where in PT in case of PT the epithelial cells are there vasculature the endothelial cells have been perfused and then you see the structure that is present here this is schematic and then the simple and this thing is present and whole mount immunofluorescence staining was done of the 3D suit done and then synthetic and then you can clearly see here the sodium potassium ATPase pump that is actually actively involved for for pumping out the the some of the means there that helps in some reabsorption of this thing so that is there CD31 is the for the endothelial cells and nuclei is the same so this is the endothelial channels for the vascular channels and this is the proximal tubule channels so all the, these two cells are sitting next to each other so they're seeing and this is the further further magnification of this thing so this is their channel they have presented and here this uh, the difference between separation between the PT and the vascular countries are only 70 microns so that much fun close uh, close look they, they have recreated and it shows also the high magnification of the structure so this is this study is uh, as I earlier mentioned the they have also seen the different physiological functions here please go through the literature for further understanding of this particular study this paper is, uh, is is open access paper it is available freely so please go through this study and understand much more because this the next thing the next study also by king at all they have done what they have produced they have produced also a renal proximal tubule proximal tubule with uh, with the 
by bioprinting technique with endothelial cells, fibroblast, and epithelial cells. Epithelial, fibroblast, and epithelial cells in vitro proximal tubule interface, interstitial interface. So, what they have done, they bioprinted, they produce these endothelial cells, printed epithelial cells, and the thing, and fibroblast and epithelial cells were used for this interstitial to develop this interstitial tissue. Now, when this bioprinted construct formed a microvascular network supported by the cellular issue of deposition, then they could this interstitial space where a tight junction are formed between the in the 3D proximal tubule tissues and had the expression of renal efflux and uptake transporters. So this kind of anatomical structures or that is important for the function of that particular tissue, those have those have, have also been again seen on this thing. And they have also demonstrated a fibrotic response they could find when TGF beta, TGF beta is a is a uh, growth it typically is a growth factor but it induces fibrosis for certain tissue like in kidney if there is a high high amount of tgf beta expression is there then it can lead to uh, kidney fibrosis fibrotic kidney so that kind of thing also they have seen within their model so this is there also they are trying to see the physiological function of that particular uh, 3d printed uh, proximal tubule structures thing because this when they injected this uh, tgf beta it the cells that is present in this in the particular in the tubule that takes a uh, this they express high matrix so they may high matrix deposition be they synthesize more matrix and that can be deposited in the structure so that because of that the fibrosis fibrosis has been generated but when this treated what a with treated with a cisplatin because cisplatin is another nephrotoxic drug what they have treated with cisplatin, they found a biomimetic reduction, viability, reduction of viability. So the cellular viability reduced, and that is also in a dose-dependent manner. And the cisplatin is a, as is a nephrotoxic drug. It disrupts the nephron, st nephron structure on the cell cells or die, and that kind of thing also is the effect also they have seen. But again, when a drug, another drug called cimetidine was used. It reverses these effects because similarly they block this cisplatin activity. The because so the, that present because of this is uh, symmetry in reaction of the OC OC2 transporter, and it because of this the cisplatin indu induced nephrotoxicity can be can be blocked. So so this symmetry effect of symmetry on the particular tissue it confirm the presence of OC2 transporter in that in that in those cells present in that tubular epithelial in that tubular the proximal tubule so this is also another study where 3d bioprinting was used to develop a thing it develop a proximal tubule interstitial tubule interstitial interface by 3d bioprinting technique as this schematic shows you the how this rptc the renal proximal tubule epithelial cells were Printed on top of this, and the, inter and the interstitial layer was printed where the endothelial cells are there, and they create this kind of vascular structures right within the interstitial space layer. And this can then this tissue is very important for to for this for this reabsorption other other thing from the proximal tubule. Right? So this is the schematic of their work, and then they have also shown the Macroscopy. This is the macroscopic view of the 3D PPT tissue that is positioned on a transwell and a standard to, to, to a 24L plate, right? In the standard 24L plate, they have printed this kind of structure where this uh, interstitial layer and on top of that the RPTEC monolayer is present, right? Yeah. So then they have also characterized this by various ways. So one such thing is by histology also. They have shown this, you see the, in the histology, each is standing clearly showing the cellular tree and tissue organization in the interstitial epithelial cell. You see epithelial is a fine layer, a tight layer of epithelial tissue is formed where it clearly, clearly that epithelial tissue is present and here also the vascular and the mat and the other tissue can be clearly visible within this in the histological site and the B is the, there is gomor is Tricom stand showing the deposition of collagen throughout the tissue. So, the CT31 is for basically for the vascular tissue, and the other the other everywhere else is the, the trichome stand that shows you the sorry here the trichome stand that is the 
blue color thing is that is the deposition of collagen deposition everywhere throughout the tissue by the cells present in that area in this in this particular tissue c is the interstitial uh, layer demonstrate the extensive endothelial cell line network so this these are the endothelial cell line network so that is creating the vascular network within this interstitial tissue so that is uh, with the cd31 stain it is can and then the other thing is also rptc from monolayer express cytokeratin that is red this keratin uh, keratin 18 so here the epithelial tissue only that here where epithelial tissue that form a monolayer and they express also cytokeratin so that is a typ typical marker for the epithelial cells and you can clearly see here a tight epithelial tight joint epithelial layer is formed here in this case and also in case of e a collagen core rich basement membrane can also be seen between the epithelial and the interstitial tissue that is very much important for because basement membrane is the component that separates the epithelial tissue and the interstitial tissue and acts as a barrier between these two and also it helps in filtration and other process not filtration absorption and other process so that so there is a ecad so here if you clearly see the collagen 4 here present in the in between the this tissue and also ecadrine that is also a marker for a cell cell junction that is also can be clearly seen in case of epithelial tissue a tight junction is established here right? and then other thing is sodium potassium sodium k potassium is for the sodium potassium atpase that is also can be very clearly see in the epithelial layer that helps in reabsorption certain sol solutes and all these things for the kidney for that that is present in the proximal tubule for the function of the particular tissue so in this particular work also they have tried to reproduce the proximal tubules and interstitial interface and also they have seen this that they have tried to see what whether this kind of tissue can a pluripotent permeable tissue uh, physiological function can be re-established or not that kind of things they have seen and also they have as i have earlier slide i mentioned they use certain nephrotoxic drug to find out whether this this can the response can be in a that is in a, that can be seen suppose that can be seen in the human body similar responses can be seen on a bioprinted model or not so this is another important study where they have shown the how 3d bio, with 3d bioprinting how a, a a functional proximal tubule interface interstitial tissue you know, interface can be established then there are many more studies actually they have target be targeted to uh, find out certain aspects of this uh, or to recreate some part of this uh, kidney structures like the another study where by Singh et al they published in biometrics where they have shown a 3d bioprinter renal tubular tissue analogs what they have used they have used a coaxial bioprinting and coaxial bioprinting method we have also discussed earlier where a, it has uh, a core shell kind of uh, Extrusion nozzle where the, through the core we can feed one type of material through the uh, outer outer nozzle we can outer compartment we can feed another material and in this case they have used they have used a, a cross linker to pass through the core channel and or probably a sacrificial material to pass through the core channel and the and a, and a thus outer channel a ECM mimicking biometric material like they have used kidney matrix Dissolved kidney matrix firing. So they have actually they have dissolved the kidney and uh, thrown basically thrown out all the cells and then collected that matrix and then they uh, collected the matrix and then hydrogel was developed from that and hydrogel and then hydrogel and that hydrogel from the hydrogel again when you incorporate cells like this tubular tubular tissue specific cell like the epithelial cells and the epithelial cells and other type of cells and then you can develop a, a, this specific biowing and that biowing was used to generate this kind of a hollow micro hollow microbiotic tubes they have generated for engineering this renal pipe and kind of composed of endothelial cells and then tubular epithelial cells so these two cell types they have used to generate this kind of renal and chimera and then but their the function of this Thing was improved by a because they have used a functional hybrid by where they have used kidney specific tissue specific kidney tissue specific disorder matrix along with other material to improve the microenvironment because kidney tissue disorder tissue has certain bioactive factors cues that induce 
or that promotes the function of these cells so that so that because and they also because they provide a uh, natural mimicking biochemical biophysical environment for this thing because and then also that helps it to allow for the vascularization process in this case their method yielded both functional renal proximal tubule on a chip as well as implantable constructs so basically they have shown both tubule on a chip and also an implantable constructs constructs they have both they have fabricated with the thing and then when they have incorporated that thing they have transplanted this renal scap scapular transplantation this sorry upon renal subcapsular transplantation of this this uh, hollow tubes that demonstrated long term sur job survival uh, in vivo with therapeutic capability in a renal disease model so actually they have created renal disease model and there they have incorporated or implanted this kind of this tubular uh, this tubule structures that actually helps to helps in uh, they have showed a therapeutic capability of this uh, long term gap survival was seen. So, combination with the active matrix along with microfibrillation of this renal tubule can be produced functional kidney tissues. So, this kind of work has shown the, prom uh, prom shown, shown the promise of developing functional kidney tissue units by combining bioactive materials and 3D bioprinting with using 3D bio microfibrillation techniques like 3D bioprinting, a kidney space. This kind of kidney specialist kidney structures, kidney tissue structures can be very well developed. The, but the future direction of all these works, because till now we have not achieved this bioprinting of fun, fully functional kidney tissue for clinical transness. We are still we have not reached this this stage. This uh, this still there are few more further development is required in this space. Like scaling up is, is a major challenge for all these things because this most of the works are like a in a other in a microfluidic uh, chip or in a small scale in a micro scale to re, to scale up that and to produce the whole kidney is a, is a humongous effort is a humongous challenge so that that so scaling up of those things those functional units into fully functional kidney is the major challenge but this this can be used as a building blocks by and by using the concept of mini tissues i have as we have discussed in our earlier tissue probably if we can develop these building blocks and if we can connect them together then we can come definitely we can come up with a fully functional kidney tissue so slow but we are have not staged you know, not reached there but slowly we are progressing or moving in that particular direction other thing is also we need to integrate the large scale vasculature because without that the this kind of this kidney patches or this thing will not be viable or functional so that's why we need to include the vasculature also within this thing but ultimately the goal is to bioprint a fully functional kidney structures and that can be used for clinical translation so that it can save many patients who are actually waiting for transplants so please go through the i have link given links for the, the several literatures so please go through the literature will understand much more about the how this uh, 3d bioprinting can be used for to develop a different kidney tissue structures and also how bioprinting strategy can be developed further to generate full functional kidney kidney tissue thank you very much